What's going on everybody and welcome back to another video. And I'm kind of surprised that nobody's made a video on this because they usually get made pretty fast. But we're going to try and beat Splatoon 3 side order without using the main weapon, the order shot. Now our only rule for this challenge is that we cannot shoot the weapon. We can use sub weapons and specials and that's it. So what constitutes as a shot? Holding the button down until your ink tank runs out is one shot. Our goal is to keep this number as low as possible. So without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Starting off of floor 1, the only bombs that we have access to is curling bombs, since we're required to use the dualies for this tutorial. And curling bombs kinda suck when trying to destroy these portal things, since they're so low to the ground. But if we make them get destroyed under the portal, it's not that hard, and we can pop the portal and move on to the next floor. Moving on to the second floor, it's really not that bad. It's just a lot more enemies and more of the same portal popping, so with that, we can move on to the third floor. Floor 3 is just another portal popping floor, so we can move on to floor 4. And this is a splat zone floor, and we get introduced to our worst enemy. Drizzling Capri- Capricuso? Oso? Capri- I don't know how to pronounce that. These guys are absolute hell to deal with. See how high up they are? They're near impossible to hit with a curling bomb, or even any bomb for that matter. It takes at least two hits to kill these guys, so we need to be very cautious of them. But keeping our eyes peeled, we're able to clear this floor and move on to floor 5. Floor 5 is our first turbine tower floor, and these stages are awful. It's so difficult to hit these with a curling bomb, and even with any bomb, since they're meant to be hit with your main weapon. And once they run out of ink, they don't move anymore, and they can even go backwards, so we need to constantly keep it filled up with ink. But it's very hard to do when there's a million enemies in the way, so we're constantly having to fight to keep it filled with ink. Walls are also obnoxious, since we can't get curling bombs up there, we constantly have to hit the turbine from the bottom, which sometimes the curling bombs can't reach. But thankfully in this stage, it is possible, and we're able to move on to the next floor. Floor 6 has two zones, so this is going to be fun. But thankfully, it really isn't that hard. We do get introduced to these guys, which would be useful, but unfortunately we can't hit their little bombs, which usually would convert them into our bombs, but we can't do that because we don't have a means to reach them. But if we just pay attention, and have a little help from Pearl, we can clear the stage and move on to floor 7. The next floor is just a portal popping floor. We also get introduced to these spinny things, which instantly destroy portals when we fling them at them, so they'll be very useful. So we can clear this level with basically no issues and move on to floor 8. Floor 8 is our first chase level floor, and these floors are so annoying. These guys keep running away from you, and the only way to stop them is to drown them in your ink. But it's very difficult to ink the entire floor with a curling bomb. Thankfully, we have access to these balloon things, so we can easily ink all the floors, kill all the running enemies, and beat the level. This next floor is an 8 ball stage, and 8 ball stages are tedious. They never seem to go where you need them to go, and their paths are completely unpredictable. With a little bit of luck and a lot of time, we're able to get the 8 balls in their holes and move on to the boss. Now, Marino is actually pretty difficult. There's only so much damage that curling bombs can do, and they can't take out humongous hordes of enemies, so I'm constantly getting swarmed. And the portals are kind of difficult to take out, because I can't really directly hit them when they're surrounded by enemies, so I constantly have to retreat. I've gotten my armor broken many times and had to fled, but with a lot, and I mean a lot of time and practice, I'm able to get down most of the portals. However, when it comes to the last portal, I just get so overwhelmed and swarmed that I have to flee. But by being very patient, I can bust that portal and basically just spam curling bombs at Marina. Thank god there isn't a time limit, because if there was, I definitely would have timed out but we're able to get Marina back, and we're able to move on to the main mode. Floor 1 is a tedious chase level, but thankfully we have a special which is the Trizuka, and it came in clutch, so we're able to clear this floor and move on to floor 2. For this floor I chose Drone Sprinkler, which will come in clutch in the later levels, so after quickly annihilating all the Alamambos, we're able to move on to floor 3. For this floor I had to destroy all the portals. And as a bonus, we can't use special weapons, which is kind of inconvenient because our only form of damage is now subs. We do get access to these spinning things, but I got swarmed so I died. But by camping on this ink rail and being patient, we're able to clear the level. The fourth floor is an 8 ball floor, and trying to get an 8 ball up a hill with a splat bomb is absolutely horrendous. They never seem to go into the direction that you want them to go in, and I'm kind of wishing that I had burst bombs. Thankfully luck was on my side, so with a lot of time I was able to clear the level. Let's move on to the 5th floor. The 5th floor had a vending machine, which is very useful. It sometimes gives you a new special, sub, or even just bonus chips. So we're able to recover one of our lives here. We didn't get new sub or special, but there are some chips here. They aren't the greatest chips, but the drone chip is actually pretty good, so I'll just grab this one. For floor 6, I decided to take on a hard floor, because I really need this mobile special charge. 
And yeah, this floor is pretty difficult. But since we get a special really fast, we're able to use the Trizuka and knock out most of the enemies here. And after popping both portals, we can move on to the 7th floor. I decided to bite the bullet again to do a hard floor to get 2 ink speed up pallets. And within 30 seconds, I regretted my decision. There are a boatload of enemies to deal with, and covering this huge zone with one bomb isn't cutting it. It is so easy to get swarmed if you're not taking out groups of enemies, and the enemy swarm is just too much so I had to take a life. Honestly, without the Trizuka, I don't even know if this floor would be possible, but with it, we're able to kill all the enemies and defend the zone. This floor really got me worried for what's coming up, because these floors aren't going to get any easier. And for the next floor, I saw splash damage up, but of course it's on a rigorous floor. So I said, you know what, screw it, let's do it anyway. And it honestly isn't that hard. Like, at all. With the Trizuka, it's so easy to kill most of the enemies and destroy the portals wicked fast. So yeah, floor 8 was a breeze, even though it's a rigorous floor. Funny how the hard floor is harder than the rigorous floor. So let's move on to floor 9. Floor 9 was just a simple portal popping floor, so we can clear this with no issues. Floor 10 is our first boss battle against the elusive boulder, pinging Martial. And this boss battle was tedious. We can only hit him in his face, and splat bombs can only explode on the floor, so we can't really hit him when his face is up above. He also keeps running away from us, which is very annoying. Thankfully with the Trizuka, we're easily able to hit him right in the face. So tediously charging my Trizuka to hit him in the face, we're able to grab the key and move on to floor 11. Floor 11 is another vending machine, and we get access to the killer whale, which will be very useful later on, so we'll definitely snag that. We can also recover another one of our lives, so let's move on. Floor 12 is another tedious 8 ball stage and it took me about 30 minutes to complete because of all the slopes and splat bombs are pretty much useless. At one point I decided to give up and just push it with my Octoling. So after about 30 minutes I cleared the stage. Remind me never to do an 8 ball stage again. And with the killer whale it makes our lives so much easier. And floors 13, 14, and 15 are pretty much a cakewalk. However floor 16 is absolute hell. Not only are there a million enemies we have to deal with, the turbine is just extremely annoying. There's a lot of places where you're meant to shoot it with a weapon since it's out of reach of your splat bomb. But thankfully we can use the killer whale for most of it, right? Well there's a part that I think is impossible. The killer whale just doesn't last long enough to make it go past the checkpoint. And splat bombs cannot reach at all, so that's out of the question. And I can't charge the killer whale fast enough before the turbine goes back to the checkpoint. So unfortunately, I had to take our first shot to get this turbine past the checkpoint. But other than that, there aren't any more roadblocks, so we can clear the level with one shot. Floor 17 was also extremely difficult to complete. There's a bunch of enemies on this floor. There's ones that spam bombs at you, there's one that float above the zone, and there's ones that fire torpedoes at you. And if the enemies have the zone for too long, the number starts increasing, so we can't let them keep the zone. But there are just so many enemies in this stage, and splat bombs just can't handle all of them. If we didn't have the killer whale, I don't think this level would be possible. But after a lot of time playing cat and dog with the zone, we're able to claim it and beat the level. Thankfully floor 18 was easy and floor 19 was a vending machine level. So let's go to the second boss. This boss is the parallel cannon, and this is the most tedious boss I've had to fight so far. The AI is so annoying and they keep moving around, so I can't hit them with my bombs all the time. I'm constantly having to either use my special or time out my bomb throw extremely precisely to hit them. And at the last phase there's just so many of them and they're aching the ground faster than I can ink the ground. But little by little we were able to kill their army and we were able to grab the key and clear the stage. That level is more annoying than I thought. Hopefully these last 10 stages will go well and we can clear the game with only one shot. Floor 21 blesses us with another vending machine level and we're able to grab Ink Storm to switch our special weapon. I really hope I don't regret this but I think it will help us during splat zones. Floor 22 is just a simple 8 ball stage, so we can clear this without an issue. We can't use Pearl Drone in Floor 23, but with Splat Bombs and help with the Ink Storm, we can clear this pretty easily. Floor 24 is our next zone protection floor, and there's a ceiling covering it, so Ink Storm won't do anything here. This level was a pain in the ass to complete, because enemies are coming from all sides. And since we basically can't use our special, we have to keep using Splat Bombs. And after luring enemies outside over and over again, we're able to clear the stage and move on. That was pretty rough. Floor 25 was another zone protection floor, but with the help of Ink Storm, it really isn't that difficult. We just have to keep our eyes peeled so no enemy ink gets on the zones and we can clear it. After being blessed with another vending machine floor, we can move on to floor 27. And floor 27 was a chase floor. It really isn't that difficult since we can use Ink Storm to ink most of the stage and slow down the enemies. And I'm not gonna lie, floor 28 was so easy with Ink Storm. 
Since Ink Storm inks basically everything, it causes these arrow blocks to pop up and block the enemies from accessing this area, so we could beat this stage with ease. Floor 29 was another turbine level, but we can't use our main weapon anyways, so this level is obviously possible. Well, this is it, the final level, and this stage is difficult, and I mean really difficult. Phase 1 isn't that bad, there aren't that many enemies, and Overlorder doesn't really shoot us that much. And as long as we're patient when the shield breaks, we could beat phase 1 and 2 with ease. Phase 3 was pretty rough with the enemy spam, I mean there are a lot of enemies. But when you break a portal, a huge explosion happens, so we'll clear out most of them. And a few splat bombs and ink storm later, and we're able to beat overlorder and beat side order. So can you beat side order without firing any order weapons? Well, possibly. This game is basically a choose your own adventure. So the stage that I selected wasn't possible, but if you selected another one, it might have been possible. But for my run, it is impossible. So let me know if you've tried this and you tried to beat side order without using an order weapon. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video, and until then, peace.